Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, we're going to talk about uh, central equilibrium and how to find it in uneven ground. And uh, this is in response to a question that Scott brought up last week. And uh, we didn't get, uh, didn't get to that one, but I wanted to, to tackle it tonight. And there's a component part uh, of that, which is a question which has been popping up uh, several times lately. So I thought I'd, I'd uh, have another go at it. And that's questions about setting the knee, because that is a, um, a central part of, of the, the central equilibrium question, particularly in response to changing conditions. How do we, how do we get that? So getting that setting the knee. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of nuance to it that uh, oftentimes kind of gets glossed over because it sounds kind of simple, but it's actually, there's, there's, there's a lot to it. So uh, let's, uh, let's tackle that right off. And the idea behind setting the knee is that you are establishing a relationship through your body with heaven and earth. You are creating a relationship between your foundation and the rest of your body. And if you, um, if the knee is wobbling around, that relationship is going to be wobbly also. So the essence of it is that you are going to, you're setting your knee, that is you're, you're placing it in a location mindfully and that location is one that you're looking for the sweet spot. You're looking for a way of, of aligning your knee over the ball of your foot in such a way as to, to allow optimal support in, the, in your structure. So uh, just uh, for an example, if I were to stand up and say I bring my right knee forward, my right foot forward. I want to feel the uh, feel the ball of the foot. And then I push my knee forward. So I'm going to do it sideways here so you can see what this. I push my knee forward. So it's just, just slightly forward of, of vertical, my shin. And I uh, can uh, uh, the when I say set the knee, that means I'm going to hold that position. And from that, that's going to provide the support for my structure and enable me to turn my waist with, uh, uh, without moving the knee. If we shift it this way now, so you get, oh, so that's a little better view. I set the knee so that when I turn my body, I'm using my quad to do that. I'm able to turn my waist and the knee doesn't move. The knee stays right where it is. So I'm, that becomes my pivot point in the, in the rotation. If I can do that very, um, you know, really clearly set that, that's going to enable me to transfer power from my foot up through my legs and into my torso and allow me to relax my torso. And, um, uh, oh, we got to, somebody, something's clunking. Rain on the oh, the rain on the, yes. Okay. The rain on the air conditioner. I okay. Sorry about the, that guys. I turned off the air for Good. So, um, the one question that came up and comes up often is that the, you set your knee and you say, oh yeah, I, I did that. I got that done. And, and then you forget about it. And which point you start doing other things. And uh, as in any relationship, there's, just, there's like a conversation going on which means that you have to go back and reestablish that every now and then. 
to particularly before you're issuing any kind of power through that through that knee through that through that leg so the um, that means that just because you set the knee once doesn't mean that it's done and just because the knee is hasn't moved it doesn't mean it's done you consciously have to return to the uh, to the knee and set it again even if you're not moving it that is you're bringing mindfulness to that and you're reaffirming your intention to to keep that knee immobilized set and then from that then that allows your body to relax and you're able to issue power from that as a pivot point so a lot of people they forget that and then they they will move on to other things and what happens is if you are um you have older established patterns which will then creep in and then knock your knee out because you are let's say for instance one of the most common is the jutting butt syndrome the jbs the dreaded jbs so that if you're if you're turning and you're unable to really release at the claw and you turn your waist and you're keeping that that the rigidity there notice that my butt is out to the side so i have jbs i've got jutting butt syndrome and anytime i my my hips move horizontally it compromises my structure so i need to set the knee and then what that does is it alerts me to the fact that say i'm turning and like take oh okay i can't i can't go any farther than this because my my hip is too tight so i say all right uh that's as far as i go it doesn't matter how far i go it matters that i go it matters that i'm releasing the quad even if it's only a just a little bit it allows me to to say okay i still have this relationship through my knee to the earth and then i turn back and if i want to go the other way i have the same same kind of deal if i my my hip is too tight that i'm going to turn if i force the turning then the knee goes with it you can see the knee is starting to 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 turn so you want to bring that back you set the knee and you say okay this is as far as i can go in turning that way or this is as far as i can go whatever until i release the quad and then if you do not have that that knee firmly established and you try to force it because you you you're not releasing the quad you're, you're kind of you're just forcing the turn then you uh, you're going to uproot yourself so the uh learning to release set the knee first and then release then you have the you give your body trust your structure enough to be able to do that so this is something so it's a a thing a thing where you mindfully set the knee over and over and over again and it's just part of part of the 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 process it becomes so that you can become it becomes quite natural and you then you can it you you feel into it and you just feel when it's off you uh, you notice that oh this is this is wrong when you don't do it but it requires to learn how to do it you requires doing it over and over and over again till you get the till you get the hang of it so the um, setting the knee enables us to then release the qua and able to create structures that um align with the with the lines of force through the body and allow for a, a smooth energy uh passage uh any questions so far rick you're muted i i know i was getting it off yeah i do uh knee exercises setting the knee every morning 
and my right my right knee is good when I when I put any pressure on it it handles it fine but my left knee it it clicks uh, either a little loudly or a little softly is there an exercise to get both knees in condition because my shoulders used to click but I exercise through that is there an exercise for my knees that I can help my knee does it click whenever you turn with there's no weight on it no it only clicks when I when I put the uh, the exercise I do I do the um, uh, the qua exercise and I also put my knee over my toes and then lean down and when I do it on my right leg no problem do it on my left leg click when I get to a certain usually when my knee is about to cover the toes from my eyes okay so if the, the knees are covering the toes from your eyes it's probably too far forward Okay. I, I would suggest doing it with a mirror or with a camera, you know, a video and just watch yourself doing it because that's one of those things where, where the knee moves and we're not even aware that it's moving because it just feels natural that it's yeah. doing it. If the knee, if your, your knee is so far forward, you can't see your toes, very likely it's, uh, uh, you're putting undue stress on the ligaments in the in the knee and uh that's where the clicking is coming from okay so, and so check that out just check and make sure that uh, as you back off the amount you're turning so that you're really relaxing releasing the qua rather than pushing it and yeah. just notice that any any movement in the uh in the knee either sideways or forward and back you know and just Say, no, no, and, and be nice to your knee and just say, okay, buddy, you know, we're, we're in this together here. I don't right. want to cause any difficulty to you because, you know, it comes back on me too. So yeah. then you, you, uh, yeah, then you make nice with that and it, uh, you know, just be mindful of that. I'm trying but to get my, yeah, Go ahead. I'm trying to get my right knee to stop making fun of it. <laughs> the right knee goes, these can be so fine. cruel sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, really. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, Valerie. Um, this thought just occurred to me. And I haven't really played with it much, uh, but can you discuss the relationship between, uh, well, jutting butt, JBS, and the way loop? Yes. Sure. Uh, and that's, that's very important. Um, If your pelvis, like so many of us, if your pelvis is, is anteriorly tilted so that you're, you're like this, right? Oftentimes it's you're, you're leaning backward and your, your pelvis is, is tilting forward like that, then, then it creates an odd angle for your hips. So when you go to turn and you're like that, then it's not a smooth transition. The muscles want to hold that shape. So they, they, they fight you whenever you, you do that. So by dropping the way Lou, the, at the tailbone, boom, like that, so that your pelvis is parallel, you know, that the, the pelvic bowl is, is not tilted. Then whenever you go to turn the hip joint said, oh, oh, that's easy. That's very smooth. And everybody just try that actually, because this is something that's very common and most of us don't even, aren't even aware of. And just consciously kind of tilt your pelvis forward a little bit and try to try to turn, feel it, set the knee and then, and try to release the quad. And notice that the quads don't like that. They, they, they fight it. <laughs> they try to, they try to hold that. And then just drop your way, Lou, boom. So the, the, the tailbone is pointing straight down and then turn, release into the quad and notice that it's much freer. So a lot of JBS, jutting butt syndrome, comes from the fact that 
that the pelvic bowl is set up. The whalu is not dropped. So the, so the butt's kind of sticking out a little bit. So when we turn, there's, we're fighting against our own muscles to whatever we try to, uh, to make that happen. So the, uh, so a key here in part of central equilibrium is, you know, reaching from the knee one and dropping the way Lou. So the, you, you're lengthening the spine and you're creating a flat pelvic bowl. Does that make sense? Good, good, okay. Uh, anybody else? Any other questions on that? Okay, looks good, looks good. Okay, good. So moving on. Um, the relationship then of the, you know, I've talked for a long time about ball me qua as a sequence. That is, you, if you, you set the ball of the, you set the foot and you feel the ball of the foot, and it doesn't mean that you're on your tiptoes. It just means that you are feeling the ball of the foot pressing down and your weight is spread over the foot. So I have my right foot forward and I, my knee, notice it just slightly ahead of forward. What I was talking to Rick about earlier is if you notice that your knee is going so far that you can't see your toes or you're just starting to cover, that means you're, you're, you're compensating for something by pushing the knee forward. So go back and then just troubleshoot and say, oh, okay, I dropped my way loo and, and, and I can turn. So that, that's, that works much better. So if we're just starting from, from this posture, we want to feel the balls of the feet, set the knees, and we reach with the crown of the head, tuck in the chin, open the jade pillow gate. So we have that, that relationship. We set the knees. So you say, yeah, well, the knees are already set. I don't have to do it again. No, even if the knees are not moving, you need to set them. You need to consciously, intentionally activate that stabilizing impact. And what what you what do when you do that? It um, it gives your body reassurance that oh yeah things are under control. And so like uh, pilots doing a pre-flight check. So you say okay got that. So before you before you move you do that check. You say okay I got this. So even if I'm just sitting standing here, I want to really feel that. And notice it yourself when you set the knee so that you're lined up over the balls of the feet, it produces an instant energetic connection. And that's what you want. You're reaching with the crown, you're, re you're relaxing your lower back, you're dropping your way Lou, your ball of the foot, set the knees, reach a little bit with the elbows, feel the fingers, and just notice the, you know, the energetic connection we get on that. So this is, Central equilibrium in a fixed posture. Okay, we have a very simple neutral posture here, and we're finding our central equilibrium in that posture. Now, what happens if we change our posture? How do we find it there? Okay, a very simple one is put your right foot forward, right? And we're going to go into a bow stance. We feel the ball of the right foot, push the right knee forward till you feel that connection there. You look down and you make sure that you're not, the knee's not too far forward. And once again, you set the knee. You know, you establish that relationship with the ground and you do it again and again and again. You relax your lower back, you reach with the way Lou, drop that, reach with the crown of your heads, reach with your elbows, reach with your fingers. You know, and then feel the qua, you know, just that ease as it's movement. With, with the pelvic bowl flat level, then you can move much more easily. So just for fun, 
push your butt on a little bit. And so your pelvic bowl is tilted forward and not try doing it. And notice the resistance that your body encounters when you do that. So just when you're, if you ever notice a resistance here, I can't quite get the, the claw right. Just, ah, oh, just drop the way Lou and boom, then do it and it glides. Okay, and that's always go back and check that. So you want to, you're starting from the ball, you're setting the knee and then you're going to the, to the hips and you're, you're working your way up so that you have this, this really solid base so that you can then release your, any tension in your upper body because you don't need that just to hold yourself from falling over. So here we are in a, in a, in a bow stance and we're finding central equilibrium in the bow stance. Now we're going to the back foot and we find central equilibrium in there. Feel the ball, set the knee and release the claw, sink, reach for the crown, find your central equilibrium there. But notice that we're, we're, we're just moving slightly off of the neutral stance here to establish you know, a really common and powerful posture. But what happens if we throw some other elements into it? So I thought of, uh, in response to Scott's question, I thought of a, an exercise that we can do with that. And that is we, these are pillows of different sizes here. And so what I'm going to do is I find my central equilibrium in a neutral posture. I've got that. I step, now I'm going to step onto one of the pillows slightly off uh, slightly different orientation, but it's also soft. So I now, how am I going to find my central equilibrium here so I can really have my stability standing on this really soft moving kind of structure. So then I want to feel the ball of the foot, set my knee, good, and release it down into my claw. So again, dropping the way Lou and finding that. So finding my central equilibrium in this posture. So now I can find this central equilibrium there. I go back and now I'm going to feel the ball going back to the floor. I'm going to feel the ball of the foot, set the knee, spiral down, really feel the central equilibrium. So I'm back to terra firma. I step out of that and I want to find my central equilibrium in this posture, right? You want to get that. And then you go, oh, I'm going to go to this other pillow here, which is a slightly different shape. Actually, I'm going to do this with my left foot now so that so I go and I step with my left foot. I feel the ball. My weight is still in my right leg. My right leg is still substantial because I haven't established my foundation yet. But I want to feel the ball. It's OK. This is a bigger pillow. And I'm going to sink a little more into it, feel the ball, set the knee. And oh, I'm going to release down into my claw. So this enables me to feel the stability of this particular structure, OK? And I have my drop my way, Lou, and feel, reach from the crown of my head. And so that now I can step in and be loaded into my left leg now and feel very secure, even though the pillow is less so. Okay, so we're, we're going between different structures. And I see some of you are doing this with me and that's, that, that's good. And you know, I uh, encourage all of us to, to make sure you do that. You go back and you, you feel, ah, oh, okay. And feel the, the, the central equilibrium whenever you are on the on on the, the flat ground now okay so uh, could, could you still do it if you were stepping up on that love seat 
Sorry? On the love seat? Yeah. Could sure. Because that would be a step up. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do it over on this thing. This is a bigger step. Okay, same idea here. I want to, I'm going to make a, a bigger step here. And this is sort of soft and squishy also. You feel the ball, set the knee, you spiral down, you know, and then you are, you're loading up here. And then you say, okay, I'm going to come up onto this surface. Okay, I'm going to come down. But if I'm using this as my, my pivot point. This is what establishes the relationship. If I wiggle this around at all, then I lose, I lose that connection. I lose that ability to, oh, okay, I'm, I, that my body no longer trusts that I know what I'm doing. But if I can sink into this and say, okay, I'm coming up here, even though I'm sinking into the, into the couch, there's, there's a lot of, of uh, mush there. It doesn't matter. I can then step out, boom. So then we're moving on to different surfaces. Okay, so uh, uh, questions, comments, thoughts? Valerie. Okay, so money maker here. Something that you can strap to your, around your hips, that's kind of flat, right? It comes, it protrudes out from your hips. It's kind of flat and there's a level in it. So you can always <laughs> look down at the level. <laughs> or you could use a laser level. You can have little, little well, laser lights go. shooting out there. There. <laughs> there you go. So you can, you can determine, you know, it's a little learning aid. Uh, absolutely, yeah, sure. Okay. Well, I give you I give you the rights to that that idea. You, you it's all yours, baby. Run with it. <laughs> or as Scott said, you could have something that's auditory so that when your hips are out of balance, there's bucks there, I'm telling you. Uh -huh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but is this is this exercise helpful? Is, it, is this yeah. helpful for, for people? It, yeah. it seems, yeah. seems to me to be right on the, you're the, you're the guy that asked the question, Scott. How does that, how does that go yeah. for you? Um, yeah, I was having a lot of trouble until you said that you, you know, to keep the, to keep it steady because the pillows I'm using are not going to be really wobbly. So yeah, as soon as I started, as soon as I started to wobble, it was all over. Uh -huh. And once you said, try and keep it steady, then, then I was able to do it. Good. So yeah, you're you're boom, helps. you're you're planting a stake in the in the ground, in the pillow, in the couch, or whatever. You know, you're boom, that's 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 your you're operating from that. That becomes your your you know your your foundation. And then you're you've got this this thing that is able to rotate around that around that structure, kind of like a universal joint on a on a on a drive shaft of a car. So it is able to able to rotate around that. And uh, so then gives you the latitude because you have that security that you, you're getting from having the, you know, the, the leg in that position. Cool. Anybody else? Yeah, Valerie. Well, I, I really liked using the pillow. One, it's non-threatening, right? I'm not gonna <laughs> fall off, bonk my head on a boulder or anything. But, um, and we were both using rather substantial pillows, thick. So as you loaded up, say the front leg, so my right leg is the leg that I, I wanted to be moving into, you know, your, your foot keeps changing because the pillow, the density of it keeps changing. Right. So, you know, that was, uh, that was very useful in, you know, keeping your mind there, keeping your mind there, um, make, you know, constantly in contact with what's going on. Right. Feeling right. it. Yeah, so that was good. I really like that good, part. Good. It's an ongoing conversation. So think of it as a dialogue that you are having, you know, your body is having with the earth, with gravity, with, uh, you know, all the, the various forces that are, that are coming to play here and under, you know, uneven surfaces. So then you get, you, it changes your frame of reference in your mind to, okay, 
that me is a priority in every everything I do, then it becomes like, you know, I set the knee, I'm walking, I'm running, whatever. There's a, even if it's for just, you know, a fraction of a second, it's still, it's still there. There's a mindfulness about that. If not, then you're going to, you're courting injury if you don't, um, if you don't bring the mindfulness to it. Cool. Good. Anybody else? All good? Okay. Um, I was just curious, does the same, is it the same kind of thing with the elbow, like the elbow being a relationship between the shoulder and the hand, or is that not? Uh, Ray made, made a very good point here, and that is, is it the same thing with the elbow? Is there, is there a similar kind of relationship? And the answer is often yes. That is, if you set the elbow, and then you operate from that, then you have, you have the stability so that you can then generate a tremendous amount of, of power with your hands that you can't have if you are moving from the shoulder. So by establishing that, it's a very similar kind of deal. You know? And the, the difference, the primary difference I see is that the elbow is anchoring in space, whereas the 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 foot is anchoring on the earth, and and so you it's it's different. There's a different kind of relationship there, but it's a it's still the same thing. And your ability to set the elbow and then and then generate force from that, um, it, it can be rather profound, and particularly whenever you're let's say you're playing push hands with somebody who's not doing that. You, you have this uh, tremendous advantage immediately whenever you, you can very relaxedly move things because you're, you're, you've got that stability of, of that structure so that everything is coming out of this and you're able to generate um, power in very small circles, very, small turns of the uh, of the body that you know of the of the hand of the forearm that enable you to to generate a tremendous amount of torque you know that, that happens so um, yes <laughs> so very much so cool so let's uh, let's go on to the next thing which is we're going to play with that um, the knee we're going to do the same sequence that we did last week when we're separating yin and yang, only this time the emphasis is going to be on setting the knee and finding your central equilibrium in this meditation. And it's gonna be gonna do it nice and slow so that you really get that. So this doesn't mean you're not also getting separating yin and yang because you are, but you'll find it is um, much easier to establish that if you have a firm foundation. I was talking to someone the other day and, and saying like one of the most yin things you can do to support the yin of your structure is to do this exercise with, with the knee and to be able to get the, get the, get comfortable in that posture because then allows you to release tension and allows the energy to flow much more freely. And so then you're, you're uh, much better able to, to find the yin in the, in the energy. So let's, uh, we're gonna do the uh, Wudong Mountain Tai Yi Wuxing Chuan, just the first part of that as a meditation. And I'm gonna talk you through it very similar to what I did last week, but I'm gonna add in the component, the, the structural component of Balni Kwa. All right, so, um, 
I'll do it with my back to you so you can follow along. Okay, we're going to start off in the Wuji, emptying out, releasing. And then do the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, really feel that. Feel the sweet spot there, and spiral down to the left, so you're really releasing down. And then turn to the right, and without moving the knee. So, it requires relaxing, releasing the way Lu, dropping that down. Pelvic bowl is flat. Pick up your left heel. Really feel yourself sinking into the right foot as you do that. Boot step out to the left. To the ball of the left foot. Set the left knee, find that sweet spot. Spiral down to the right. So you're releasing the claw, you're releasing down, spiraling down to the right. You're starting to load up the left leg. Still reaching with the crown of your head, reaching with your elbows, reaching with your fingers. When I say reaching here is a very relaxed kind of reach. But it's a conscious extension so that you're lengthening the connective tissue in your body and creating tensegrity throughout the whole structure. And then turn your waist, pivot on the right heel so that now you're facing forward. Feel the balls of both feet, set both knees. Bow forward slightly from the claw. Releasing down. So we're going yin now. Feeling the yin and then straightening up. It becomes more yang. Feel we're returning now to the taiji, the, the undifferentiated wholeness. There's a, a sense of coherence throughout the whole system. Sink, set your knees and sink down and rotate your forearm so the palms face forward. So this is the Tai Chi, but there's a radiance to it. Separate the yin and the yang. Opening, creating two poles. Feel the hands reaching in different directions and creating a, an energy between them. Reach with the crown of your head. Feel the balls of your feet. Your knees have not moved. Relax your lower back. We're going to start you reach out a little bit to the right, reach a little to the left, and then bring your right hand down. So the left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the left. Right hand spirals, rotates, and step with your right foot. Feel the ball of the right foot, push your right knee forward, set the knee, 
set the right elbow. And turn. Right hand is the yang hand now, the left hand is yin. But feel the, the energy between them. Even though your left hand is yin, it's not empty. You're feeling a lot of juice in that left hand. Give it on your left heel a little bit and then feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee. And set your left elbow, turn. So your left leg is a substantial one. Your left hand is the, is the yang hand. Your right hand is the yin. Look down your toes. You don't want the knee to go too far forward. You want to bring it, if it's too far forward, you want to have, bring it back so it's just slightly forward of, of, of uh, vertical. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the left. Right hand comes down, right foot comes in. And step out with the right foot. And turn. Feel the chi that uh, is being generated throughout the whole system as we separate yin and yang. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the right. The left hand turns, comes down, palm up, step in with your left foot. And you feel Feel the energy in that posture. Step out with your left foot. Feel the ball of the left foot. Push your left knee out. Set the left knee. Spiral down to the right. You're loading up the left claw now. Set your left elbow. Reach with your left hand. Your left hand is the yang hand, right hand is yin. Right fall, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. So you're loading up the right claw. Spiral down to the left, right hand rotates up, turn, and reach with the right hand. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. Loading up the left claw, set your left elbow, turn. Left hand reaches out. Step in with your right foot. Step out, right ball, set the right knee. Spiral down to the left. Reach with your right elbow. Turn. Left hand comes up. And left ball, set the left knee. Spiral down to the right. Sink into your left claw. And Bring your arms around, round your arms in front of your chest, reaching out with your elbows, your wrists, your fingers, reach with the crown of your head, sink into that left claw. And turn, pivot on your right heel. So the feet are 50, the weight is 50 50. Feel the balls, set the knees, reach with the crown. Reach with your elbows, reach with your wrists, reach with your fingers. 
for returning to the Taiji. Ball, knee, sink. Rotate your forearms, palms forward. Hands come down. Empty out. Return to the Wuji. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. Loading up the right leg, step in the left foot. Come up, deep breath. And disappear the chi. Grab a seat. Mm. How did that go? <laughs> Looks like a Havana Gila there, Rick. <laughs> you saying something, Stan? I, you're on mute. You're still on mute. You're still on mute. <laughs> you're still on mute. <laughs> Uh, while Stan is working on his mute, anyone else have something? <laughs> oh, there it is. There I you came, go. Okay. <laughs> I came through now. Uh, the only thing I could say is I we need to do this at least one more time again, if uh, possible. I, I'd like to sort of get into it a little bit more. Well, you can always check out the YouTube video, Stan. Okay. Because so I... I we did it I last week. We did it this week. So I think you can you can practice that. That's why we probably record good. these things so people can practice that. And, Just that uh, I, when I try to catch the newest one, it's somehow uh, not there. It's a little bit later, it seems to be. Uh, how long does it take to go on? We did a couple of days. A couple of days? Okay, uh, certainly will. Because uh, I sometimes find uh individual ones but we, when we i do try our best, to go man. pardon we do, we do our best oh they, hey <laughs> when you say a couple of days i, I to me it, that it wouldn't matter if it was a week but uh, as long as i i'm able to find it you usually within a couple of days i have it uh, i have it have it done so uh, very good cool. so uh, thank you good anybody else any other uh questions thoughts that went okay mm -hmm. Good, good, good. So what we're talking about here is we shifted our focus from the very insubstantial, which is the separation of yin and yang, into the very substantial, which is where do I put my damn knee, and uh, and uh, and how, how do I how do I support this uh, hunk of meat that I I haul around? So it's uh, you. Uh, so that's a very substantial consideration. And there's really no difference between the two. 
it's just two two sides of of the same coin mm. you know, and they uh, uh, they support each other cool um, Scott what I find a lot um, when I'm doing any of this work is that I keep um, you know I'll start out fairly upright and then I'll just keep sinking keep sinking into my legs you know and I'll end up you know not not I still have the probably have you know the correct posture but I'm way more you know way more of a low form than when I start and it seems to be you know it's something I do all the time and even when I try not to so uh, I well know. is it uh, you're saying you're still whole, adhering to the the, yeah. the basic, but it's just lower? Yeah, it's, I don't know if it's whether I just feel that I need to be lower to support myself or what, but you know, it just seems to be like when I, you know, even when I do my form, by the end of the form, I'm way lower than when I started. Or Well, just check the angle of your knees and make sure that that's not compromised and make sure that, you know, you're, you're not leaning backward to get there. And if you do that, then lower is okay lower is fine you know and you know, doing doing the posture lower is it cultivates other energies and and also physical attributes that you're not going to get if you're doing it higher so but you really want to it's really i really want to emphasize that you are still adhering to the the fundamentals when you do that and then that just means you're getting stronger. Cool, Thanks. Rick. Yes, uh, first of all, I wanted to say it was like revisiting the Japanese spa because I'd get into the <laughs> hot pool and then I'd get into the cold pool. And that's why I was doing the Hava Nagila because I was being doused with warmth and then coolness depending on where I was. However, at the end, I noticed that I was getting energy here. Do you think that was from too much chi and I didn't I didn't disappear it enough, or is it just who knows? Uh, it could be just opening up energy channels, you know, in the uh, you know particularly there in your uh, uh, lung lung area. So very good. Uh, you know, so you know, uh, was, if it if it wasn't hurting, don't worry about it. <laughs> no, again, it was just it was just like somebody digging. I was a bus, and they were digging to get off, <laughs> pulling it on a little. Thank you. I was okay. hoping with that. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, 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 if there was no pain involved, don't worry about it. I think it just because uh, uh, it's not an exercise. You know, you do a lot, and and so whenever you do that kind of thing, it's it's like whoa, your body says, hey, how do I? process this new information this new energy this new information so then you yay fun stuff yes cool um mm -hmm. so uh any any questions about the the whole setting the need thing first of all actually big question is in following along that exercise was there anything there that you found particularly challenging or um, something that was, um, I just can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, was there, yeah. was, was it a, uh, Richard? Um, just for myself, I find that until I get stronger and stronger, I have to keep my, um, I have to keep kind of small between my feet. Mm -hmm. That's perfectly fine. That, that, I, I encourage that, you know. Um, I'm hoping to get stronger and to be able to stretch farther, but uh, I, I really lose it if I am trying to step, if I'm trying to move my substantiality too far. <laughs> right, but, and, and all the while reminding yourself how far you've come. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's, it's too easy to, to get, you know, compare ourselves against the ideal where the, you know, the perfect becomes the enemy of the good. And uh, I just want, you know, I just want to affirm how much you have improved, you know, 
in, in the last few years anyway. And, uh, and just be, you know, be cognizant of that and allow that rightness to feed you because we want to organize to the rightness that uh, it keeps things lifting, keeps, keeps wind in our sails. So uh, do, uh, yeah, so just keep, keep, you're doing great. So just keep, keep that going. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Um, if you're experiencing any kind of pain or uh, difficulty in your knees, chances are you're not lining it up correctly because you really shouldn't be taking any any load into the knee here. It's, uh, if the knee is too far forward, you start to feel the load. So just back it off. So it becomes more and closer to vertical and that will help uh, in most situations. And um, yeah. And what it does it is it enables you, it frees up other parts of your body so that you don't have to go there. You don't have to go to that place where you know you're you're forcing it. Mm. And it um, that exercise that you know I uh, talked about a few weeks ago, that of working with the um, rectus femoris, the uh, in the thigh, the uh, the muscle that goes straight down the center here of that. It's the only muscle in the quads that connects the patella with the hip. And it's one that gets very little love in, in, most, uh, in most of our exercises. And it's really crucial for what it is we're doing. Your ability to feel really stable has a lot to do with how strong that is. So the, ability, so the exercise, just as a reminder, you know, to, to just grab something that, you know, is reasonably stable, you feel the ball, set the knee, and just drop straight down. And you don't have to go very far, but you want to drop straight down so you're feeling that working, feeling that part of your body working, and very slowly come back up and down, right? And so you're you're feeling into that. And you can, as you get stronger, you can go deeper and deeper, but that will make a huge difference in your stability. Mm. And um, going forward, you know, I, I can't recommend it enough right now. It's just been very powerful. I wrote a blog about it a couple of weeks ago, read that and, uh, um, you know, it, I think it's a, it's a really important exercise. Mm. Okay. Uh, thank you all so much. Love you all. Thank you.